All right, let's dive into the world of antibody drug conjugates, or ADCs. They're really shaking things up in cancer treatment, kind of like um, like microscopic smart bombs that zero in on cancer cells and try to leave the healthy ones alone. We're using a really cool Q&A to guide us, so how about, we, how about we break it down and see how these things actually work? Well, the really interesting part is how they combine the precision of these antibodies with like the power of these psychotoxic drugs. It's a pretty elegant way to do targeted therapy. So you're saying it's not just about you know brute force, it's about hits the right target. Exactly. The Q&A explains that ADCs have three main parts. You have the antibody, you have the linker, and uh, you have the payload. So the antibody is kind of like a key that's searching for its lock, right? It binds to very specific proteins that are only found on the surface of certain cancer cells. The linker, well, that acts like a bridge connecting the antibody to the payload. And then the payload, that's the potent drug that really delivers the knockout punch to the cancer cell. That's pretty amazing. But why is this such a big deal? I mean, we already have chemotherapy, right? Right, but that's a great question. That's where ADCs really start to shine. See, traditional chemotherapy is like using a floodlight. It hits everything. Healthy cells, cancerous cells, just everything. That's why chemo often comes with so many side effects. But ADCs are more like a laser beam. They deliver a high concentration of that drug directly to the cancer cells and minimize the damage to healthy tissue. Ah, well, less collateral damage. That makes sense. Now, the Q&A also mentions that ADCs can be effective against drug-resistant cancers. Can you explain how that works? Absolutely. So some cancer cells, they can actually develop ways to pump out or neutralize chemotherapy drugs, right, that makes them resistant to treatment. But ADCs kind of bypass this resistance because they're actually using the cancer cell's own mechanisms to get the drug in. So once the antibody binds to the cell surface, the whole ADC gets taken inside the cell and then the linker releases that payload inside. It's almost like sneaking the drug past the cell's defenses. Wow, that's really clever. You're making this complex science sound pretty easy to understand. Well, it's not exactly simple. The Q&A does point out, though, that there are definitely challenges in developing these smart bombs. It's a delicate balance between the antibody, the linker, and the payload. Sounds like walking a tightrope. What are some of the challenges scientists are facing, then? Well, for starters, the antibody has to bind strongly to the cancer cell and get internalized. And the linker, the linker needs to be stable when it's circulating in the bloodstream, but then it has to release the drug only once it's inside the cancer cell. And of course, the payload itself has to be potent enough to actually kill the cell, but it also has to be soluble and stable enough to reach its target. It reminds me of Goldilocks. You know, everything has to be just right. You got it. And then another really important factor is the drug antibody ratio, or uh, we call it DAR-R. This measures how many drug molecules are actually attached to each antibody. So if there's too little of the drug, the ADC won't be effective. But if there's too much, then it could become too toxic and harm healthy cells. So there's a lot riding on getting that DAR just right. What are some of the ways scientists are working to ensure the stability and safety of these ADCs? Well, that's where things get even more interesting, right? So ADCs, they can be pretty sensitive to their environment. Factors like temperature, pH, even light and enzymes, those can all degrade them. And that can reduce their effectiveness and impact their safety. So how do you make sure these complex molecules stay intact and effective, especially during storage, transportation, and administration? Right. Well, that's where the really important role of analytical services comes in. Think of them as the quality control experts, right, in the ADC world. They use a bunch of different techniques to evaluate like every aspect of these molecules, from how they're manufactured to how they actually behave in the body. So it's like this really, really rigorous testing process to make sure that only the best and safest ADCs make it to the patients. Exactly. And one of the uh, one of the key tests that they do is called a serum stability study. Basically, it simulates the environment of the human body and it lets researchers predict how an ADC will actually perform over time. So it's like a dress rehearsal for the ADC, helping scientists understand how it will act once it gets into the body. Exactly. And this information is critical for determining, you know, like the shelf life of an ADC. And it helps figure out the optimal dosing schedule for patients. But it doesn't even stop there. The QEA also talk about how complex it is to analyze these ADCs within real biological samples like, uh, you know, blood or tissue. This sounds incredibly complex. How in the world do scientists actually track these tiny molecules in the human body? Well, it involves a combination of some really advanced techniques. For example, they use something called LCMSMS, which is like a, it's like a super sensitive detective. It can detect and quantify even the tiniest amounts of the drug component of the ADC. They also use immunoassays, which focus more on the antibody part. And this lets them see how much of the ADC is actually present and how it's behaving in the body. Okay. 
I've started to see why you said this was such a fascinating area. Oh, it really is. And remember, we're just scratching the surface here. The potential to transform cancer treatment is, well, it's huge. And we're really just getting started. I'm definitely hooked. You've convinced me that ADCs are way more than just, you know, like cool science. They're giving real hope to people who are facing cancer. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we've got a lot more ground to cover. So stay tuned as we continue our deep dive into ADCs and explore how they could revolutionize how we treat cancer. Welcome back. We're still deep in the world of antibody drug conjugates, those microscopic smart bombs going after cancer cells. It's really amazing how far this technology has come in such a short time. Oh, it really is remarkable. You know, just a few decades ago, the whole idea of using antibodies to deliver these potent drugs directly to cancer cells was like science fiction. But now it's becoming a reality and it's offering hope to patients with all kinds of cancers from leukemia and lymphoma to breast and lung cancer. All right, the Q&A does mention ADCs are showing a ton of promise for those specific cancers. Is that, uh, is that just the beginning? Are researchers looking at other potential applications for ADCs? Oh, absolutely. The field is just exploding with possibilities right now. Researchers are constantly looking for new targets for these ADCs. They're developing more, um, more sophisticated linkers and payloads to make them even more effective. And they're even exploring ways to combine ADCs with other really promising therapies like, uh, like immunotherapy. Okay, you mentioned immunotherapy. For those of us who aren't scientists, can you explain what that is and how it might work with ADCs? Sure. So immunotherapy, it's really a revolutionary approach to cancer treatment. It actually harnesses the power of the patient's own immune system to fight the disease. So while ADCs, you know, they focus on delivering that cytotoxic payload to kill cancer cells directly, immunotherapy actually helps the body to recognize and attack those cancer cells more effectively. Oh, so it's like you're giving the body's natural defenses a boost to fight the cancer cancer. Exactly. And the exciting thing is that there's growing evidence that combining these two approaches, the ADCs and the immunotherapy, could lead to even better outcomes for patients. So imagine an ADC that not only eliminates those cancer cells directly, but then it triggers the immune system to recognize and destroy any remaining tumor cells too. Wow. That sounds like a pretty powerful one-two punch. It seems like the future of cancer treatment is getting brighter all the time. But I'm sure there's still some challenges to overcome with ADCs, right? The Q&A did mention some potential risks. Yeah, that's true. Like with any new technology, there are going to be potential risks and uncertainties associated with ADCs. You know, we need to make sure we're finding that sweet spot, the right balance between making these treatments as effective as possible, but also minimizing the risk of harming healthy cells. So it's like walking that tightrope again, you know, try to maximize those benefits, but minimize those risks. Exactly. And, you know, there's always a chance of those off-target effects happening where the ADC binds to some healthy cells, and that can lead to some damage. That's why it's so crucial that we're doing this rigorous research and these extensive clinical trials. It helps us really understand the long-term safety and the effectiveness of these treatments. It's important to remember that every patient is different, too. Their, uh, their cancer type, the stage it's in, their overall health, their medical history, you know, all of that can influence how they respond to these ADC treatments. That makes sense. It sounds like um, like personalized medicine, you know, where they tailor those treatments to each patient's individual needs. That seems like a critical aspect of ADC development. Absolutely. As we learn more about, you know, how cancer works, as the biology advances and as our technology keeps evolving, we're likely to see even more targeted and effective ADC therapies. And, you know, this offers new hope for patients all over the world. It's pretty inspiring to see these incredible advancements in cancer research. It really feels like we're right on the edge of a whole new era in cancer treatment. As we're wrapping up this part of our deep dive into ADCs, it's pretty clear that these smart bombs, they really do hold a lot of promise for the future. But before we finish our exploration completely, I have one more question that I just I have to ask. What other, um, what other amazing developments are on the horizon for ADCs? What's next for this groundbreaking technology? So you've really made ADCs sound like this super powerful weapon against cancer. But uh, I'm wondering, is there more to them than just, you know, delivering these cytotoxic payloads? Like what else are researchers looking into with these ADCs? Well, what's really exciting is that we're starting to see these ADCs evolve beyond just delivering those cell killing payloads. Researchers are now looking at using them to deliver other kinds of therapeutic agents, things like um, molecules that can actually stimulate the immune system or even gene editing tools. Wait, so you're saying so you're saying that the same technology that can deliver those targeted toxins could also deliver therapies that like <laughs> therapies that can actually reprogram how the body responds to cancer? Yeah, exactly. Imagine like imagine an ADC that not only 
you know, wipes out those cancer cells, but it also reprograms the surrounding environment to make it harder for that tumor to come back. Or, or one that delivers these gene editing therapies right into the cancer cells to correct the mutations that are causing the cancer to grow in the first place. Wow. That would be incredible. It's like, we're not just fighting cancer anymore. We're actually trying to like rewire it. It sounds almost, it sounds almost too good to be true. I know it's pretty amazing stuff. And, and with all the advancements we're seeing in, you know, antibody engineering, linker technology and payload design, the potential applications of ADCs just seem limitless. I mean, we're really on the cutting edge here at the forefront of a revolution in cancer treatment. This is really mind blowing. But I mean, with great power comes great responsibility, right? We have to make sure that these tools are being developed and used ethically. You know, we've got to put patient safety and accessibility first. Oh, absolutely. Like with any big medical breakthrough, there are ethical considerations that we need to address. We need to make sure that everyone who needs these, you know, these potentially life-saving treatments and can get them, regardless of their background, you know, or their financial situation. And of course, research and clinical trials are absolutely crucial. We need those to fully understand both the short-term and the long-term effects of these therapies. Right. That's a really important point. It's awesome to be excited about these scientific advancements but we can't forget about you know we can't forget about the human side of it all exactly it's a balancing act for sure and ongoing conversations between the scientists the clinicians the patients and and the ethicists those are really essential to make sure these new tools are used responsibly for the benefit of everyone well after this deep dive into adcs i think it's safe to say that these smart bombs are way more than just some you know cool scientific idea they represent a huge step forward in how we fight cancer and they're offering hope and, and maybe even cures for diseases that we thought were untreatable before. I totally agree. It's a really exciting time to be working in this field. And I really encourage everyone listening to stay curious, stay engaged as we keep pushing forward and unlock the full potential of ADCs. We're witnessing the future of medicine unfold right here. Thank you so much for taking us through this complex and fascinating topic. For our listeners, if you want to learn more about these ADCs and the amazing role that companies like Emory Pharma play in their development, be sure to check out their website at www.emerypharma.com. Or you can email them directly at info at emerypharma.com. They're doing incredible work right here in the Bay Area. It's been great to be a part of this deep dive. I hope everyone found it as interesting as I did. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and never stop exploring.